Das folgende Video wird euch präsentiert von IBM Global Entrepreneur, dem internationalen Startup-Programm für junge Unternehmen mit B2B-Software-Lösungen. Bewerbt euch jetzt und macht mit Big Blue den Planeten smarter. Welcome to Venture TV and welcome all the Star Trek fans out there. And I got something special for you. You know what, the tricorder that you might know uh, from the series, the thing that you can hold in your hand and you can analyze pretty much everything. The tricorder is here. It's called Scanadu. And um, I'm here with Walter de Brauer. And Walter, um, you actually invented it. It's a device called Scanadu and you can scan a lot of things, mostly in the medical areas. Tell us more about Scanadu. What is it? Well, it's um, so it's a tricorder, you know. Uh, in the first, first version, so basically it does everything that an emergency room does. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a, a great team, so I'm, you know, who are a lot better than I am. We have, you know, we all invented that together. Uh, so, but it took us. It is. It was very, very difficult, and it still is very difficult. So I didn't imagine uh, this to be that difficult, actually. Okay. Yeah. And and. Um You, uh, what, what's your background yourself? Are you are you um, very uh, are you a scientist or what's your background? Uh, I'm a linguist mm -hmm. by uh, formation, mm -hmm. uh, a formal linguist. Okay. So it's uh, um, uh, it's uh, you know formal linguistics is uh, basically how compilers are made, how parsers are made, uh -huh. how data searches are done. So I'm. Uh, very much interested in the data and the representation yeah. of the data, the visualization of the data, you know. Yeah, so how does Scanadu actually work? How, what's the, um, yeah, what's the, what's the thing like? Yeah, uh, so, <laughs> so, uh, uh, um, so, you have sensor uh, fusion, so you have different sensors that uh, actually are uh, inside the little device, which you I have, have in my with pocket, okay. actually. Uh, so, and we'll, see? and we'll show it, and, yeah. uh, okay, so, this is it, uh, can you see it? Um, a bit, yeah, and it has, in front it has a little metal thing. Yeah, so uh, you see the, uh, the uh, Uh, the real thing that yep. is now manufactured will be only half, oh, half okay. that big. So and so we have put everything in the front. So is an uh, ECG uh, um, a sensor. Uh, there is a PPG sensor. There's of course microprocessors, three accelerometers, uh, a lot of other sensors. 106 components. And basically, you do it like this, and then in this way you make a circuit with the body and you chase the, uh, uh, the readings always through okay. and so that you can also correct you know, which reading it is. You know, like, um, wow. yeah. so, so it basically has the functions that an emergency room has, which is? Yes. Which is, uh, you know, in an emergency room they, they do mostly the five vital signs, mm -hmm. which are uh, temperature, there's an infrared uh, uh, temperature also yeah. sensor in. Um, there is a respiratory rate, uh, diastolic and systolic blood pressure, uh, SpO2, which is oxygenation, um, and, uh, and heart rate or pulse rate. But it also gives you ECG, you can have Voxmax, you can have uh, a lot of other algorithms which come onto it. And uh, so this is like, uh, you know, a full-blown ER. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then thinking about that, um, full-blown ER is really, really, really expensive. Now you are putting all that stuff that, that stands there into a little device. Isn't that device really, really, really expensive as well? Uh, well, we are making it for 199 and we are hoping, uh, you know, that more, you know, that we will be able to put the price down um, to the level where people could buy it at the price of a thermometer so that it would eventually replace the thermometer. So was it then not as hard as I think to build it? Are the, are the functions hard. a lot easier to measure than, than everyone thinks? Uh, no, it was, it was very hard because first of all, you know, all these sensors have never been together. Okay. And secondly, on top of that, so when one of the sensors makes a mistake, you know, and then you have to put the claims onto it, which is actually the, um, uh, the data fusion. You have yep. to fuse the different data. Also, if you are using bodily fluids or so, like urine analysis, and it has to go in there with your uh, uh, normal, uh, you know, uh, health record, your user record, you know, how do we fuse 
mobile uh, mobile data, you know, fluidics, plus um, uh, mechanical and electromechanical data, plus uh, imaging data, and what does it mean, you know, for the consumer? Because the consumer, I think, wants a detector. It wants yes or no. You know, he yeah. doesn't want an instrument that goes into yeah. all sorts of speculation. And um, what does that mean to the consumer now? Like you, before you had to go to the hospital to get all checked. Now you can do that at home. What do you think? What's the how? How will it change our lives? How will it, how will it change our health? Yeah. I think it will ma mainly. Uh, so we put a lot of design thinking in there. So we know when people are using it, and uh, so they are mostly using it to re record. Like for instance, they do this several times a day, eight to ten seconds, yeah. and then after a couple of days or in the evening, they look at it and see their personal analytics. It's not that they immediately look at their analytics; yeah. they store it and they get like a time series, yeah. you know, uh, and see how they evolve. And if something happens, it's like a surveillance camera. When something happens, you go back and you look at the incident. Okay. You know? And you can track actually um, a, a, quite a number of, of uh, popular diseases. Oh well, of, 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 com like, of common diseases. Uh, yeah, well, it's uh, it's mainly not um, the disease that you are tracking. It's the run up to the disease, like, uh -huh. or uh, you know, if you are uh, if you have hypertension and with your heart rate and combination of all these symptoms, you know, basically uh, vital signs are the components of what our medical narratives of doctors are based on. Yeah. Because a doctor looks at your vital signs and he has like a baseline. And then he sees, you know, uh, uh, for instance, urine analysis and blood analysis, and then he fuses that all together. So yeah. actually, we are doing the same in silicon. Okay. Yeah, pretty cool. So how many people are working on the product right now? Uh, for the moment now, uh, uh, 19, but we have to order another. Uh, we, have, we have to hire another uh, 10 to 15 people. Oh, and it's all financed by who? Yeah, it's all privately financed. Okay, yeah. and you did a, you did a Kickstarter campaign? Oh uh, no, Indiegogo. Oh, uh, Indiegogo, Indiegogo, right? Campaign. Yeah, it was Indiegogo. Yeah. 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 So, um, where can I buy that stuff? Um, and when can I well, buy? Well, you 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 cannot because it's uh, pre-ordered on Indiegogo. So that's the first 9,000 clients. And uh, so uh, the um, uh, uh, then uh, it has to go into, it goes into FDA with the usability study. Yeah. And at the end of um, of uh, the year, we will probably be ready to um, you know to manufacture it. So okay. it will take a, a while still. Are you looking for first nine thousand will be shipped in uh, March, and this will already be uh, because everywhere in the world you will see things light up. You know, like. Yeah. Taking a blood pressure, <laughs> the amount of data will be enormous. It's, yes. it's the global body yeah, instead true. of the global brain. True. Yeah. Well, quite interesting, and um, I'm, I'm pretty curious how um, how the usage of that will turn out, and if, if how many people will use it, and yeah. how the overall health of humanity will change through devices like that. Yeah. yeah. Thanks yeah. a lot for the interview, Thank and you. good luck. Thank you.